here we are with 4.5 exponential and logarithmic equations so now that we know everything we know about logarithms and how to type them in the calculator and natural logarithms and how to type those in the calculator now we can solve equations and in a different way than what we were doing before okay now remember if you were solving a squared problem you took the inverse right or the opposite operation and you took the square root of both sides you use the inverse operations to get rid of them that's the same thing that we're going to do throughout this whole section so if you've got a logarithm right logarithm base a of x equal to some number you can use the the inverse of a logarithm which is an exponential which means um you can say a raised to this exponent is equivalent to a raised to that exponent and then you'll use your property that if log base a and i mean if exponential base a and log base a as long as the bases are the same those are going to undo each other like inverses do and you're just going to have x all by itself and so then you'll be able to find out what x is okay now if you have the reverse if you have um an exponential problem let's say you have this problem to solve okay when you have an exponential equal to a number what's the opposite of an ex exponential a log so you would do log with the same base and then base and then log with the same base on this side so you're doing the same thing on both sides you're applying log base a on both sides of the equation but over here the log base a and the exponential base a are going to undo each other leaving you with just x and here you have this problem to solve okay now if i had that i would have to do the change of base would so what I normally do is when I'm going to apply the log on both sides, I usually use the LN so that I don't have to change the bases later to type it in my calculator because I know I can type LN in my calculator. So for instance, this problem here, um, or you can just use the change of base formula, right? So you have LN of, of that number over LN of A and it's done, okay? So let's give some examples so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I have this problem here and I have base with the power x, there's no way to get 21 and 8 to have the same base, okay? So what we can do is we can get rid of the 8 by using the opposite or the inverse of an exponential. The inverse of an exponential is a log. So if this is base a, then my log needs to be base a. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do the same on the other side. Then use the properties of inverses. Inverses undo each other. So the log base A and the exponential base 8 will cancel each other out. And all I have left on the left-hand side is X. Now this, I will need that change of base formula in order to get a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandth. So I'm going to use ln of the argument over ln of the old base. And what do I get in my calculator? Let's see. Fraction ln of 21 over ln of 8. And I get to the nearest thousandths, tenth hundredths thousandths. So 1.464. Now here's another problem, right? It's also an exponential. So in this case, the base is 1 half. So I'm going to do log base 1 half of this side and log base 1 half of this side. Then the log base 1 half and the exponential base 1 half will cancel each other out, leaving me with just x. And this expression, I can use the change of base formula to solve it. So I get log of the argument, or I like to use ln. So ln of the argument over ln of 1 half. So let's type that in the calculator. ln of 6 over ln of 1 half. Close the parentheses. And we get negative 2.585. The 9 will change that 4 
to go up. Okay, now notice that in both of the problems that we just did, the exponential piece was alone before I started introducing log on both sides. Notice that in this example, this is the exponential piece and it is not alone. It is not by itself. It has this times two and this plus one. So we have to isolate that that's inside the red box. We have to isolate that exponential part before I can introduce the log on both sides to get rid of that two. So the first thing we wanna do is subtract one on both sides. And that gives me 48. Then I wanna divide by this coefficient so that I get two x minus one equals 24. And now that the exponential part is by itself, now I can apply the log on both sides. So I'm gonna apply log base two because this has a base two and log base two of 24. Now on this side, the log base two and the exponential base two are going to cancel each other out and I'm left with just the exponent x minus one. Over here, I end up with this. Now I'm not done because x is not solved for. So I do have to add one to both sides. And you cannot type this number in your calculator so we will have to use the change of base formula. So ln of the argument over ln of the base. And I can type that exactly in my calculator and it will give me a decimal and I'll round it to the nearest thousand. So fraction ln of 24 over ln of two. And then on the side, I'm gonna put plus one. So it looks exactly like it is on my paper. And if I round that to the nearest thousandth, we have 5.585. And so that's the answer here. Okay. Let's try another one. So now we have logarithms and we have to use the opposite of the logarithms, which is the exponentials. But just like you had to get the exponential part alone before you could apply the inverse, it's the same with the logarithms. You have to have that um, logarithm part alone before you can do the exponential to get rid of it. So I see a coefficient here, which means I need to divide by that coefficient before I can um, get rid of the log or ln, same thing. And what is the base of an ln? The base is e. So if I have a log base e, I need to use the exponential base e. I need to do that exponential on both sides. So this becomes the exponent on here and this becomes the exponent there. And we know that base e exponential and log e exponentials cancel each other out. So I just have x equal e to the ninth. Now this one says to give them exact values, so I'm not going to type that in the calculator, I'm just going to box it. That is a positive value, so my argument will be positive, therefore this is a solution. Now the log's already by itself, and the base is a three. So I'm gonna do the exponential three on both sides. So this whole side becomes an exponent, and on the right hand side, that side becomes an exponent. Then the exponential base three and the logarithmic base three are going to undo each other, leaving me with x cubed minus five and three to the one is just three. So if I add five to both sides, I get x cubed is equal to, to eight. And then if I take the cube root on both sides, I get x equals Two. The cube root of 8 is 2. If you're ever not sure, type in 3 second exponent button. That makes it a cube root and then type in 8 and it tells me it's 2. So make sure that that's going to give you a positive argument. If I plug in 2 here, it's going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 5, which is 3, and 3 is a positive argument. So this is a solution. Okay, 
Now, I think I'll solve a couple more problems, but I will stop when we start getting into the formulas of everything. The uh, word problems. So here it says, solve this equation and give exact values. Now, before you can do the exponential, apply the exponential, you do have to have just one log, okay? One log only. So what that means is I'm going to have to do, um, I'm gonna have to combine these logs together. So if I combine those logs together, remember when it's a plus sign, it means you're going to take this argument multiply it by that argument and the right hand side already has one log so that one's good then what we're going to do is we're going to use the base which is an invisible 10 and we're going to raise that on both sides so log base 10 of this equal to uh, 10 raised to the log 10 of this and then the exponential base 10 log base 10 cancel on both sides actually so you just end up with this exponent equal to this exponent and then I can distribute here so I end up with 2x squared plus x equal to x plus 8 and then I can start solving. It is a quadratic, so I do have to get it equal to zero. Oops. So I have zero on this side, and on this side I have two x squared plus eight, or no, minus eight. I can factor out a two, and then I can factor this into x plus two and x minus two. Now you can't set two equal to zero because that's never gonna happen. But if x plus two is zero, that means x would have to equal negative two. And if x minus two are equal to zero, that would mean x would have to be positive. However, they may not both be solutions. If I try to plug in two here, I get two times two, which is four, plus one, which is five. That is a positive value, so we're good here. If I plug in two there, it's a positive value. If I plug in two here, I get 10, which is a positive argument. So two works. If I plug in negative two here, I get negative four plus one, which is negative three. That means I would have a negative argument. This number here only needs to make one of these guys negative, and immediately it's not a solution. So this one, is not going to be a solution at all. So I only have one answer here, and that is x equal to two, okay? So always, always, always make sure you check that your solutions will give you positive um, arguments and positive bases, if that's where the variable is, okay? So if your variable's in the base, make sure you're gonna end up with a positive base. If your variable's in the argument, make sure you're gonna end up with the positive argument. You have to check your answers on here. Most chances are you're gonna do all your problems, all your work right, and you're gonna get the problem wrong on the test because you didn't check your answers, okay? So make sure that you check these answers. Now here, this one already has one log all by itself. So since it's a base three, I'm gonna do exponential base three on both sides. And it's important that you have the notation down, that you understand this is a base and all of this is an exponent, but that three still needs to be a subscript. So then this is gonna cancel. I'm gonna have four x plus one times x plus one and three to the power three is 27. So I'm gonna distribute this, so I get four x squared plus four x plus one x plus one. This is a quadratic, so I am going to get it equal to zero. And then I have four x squared, I'm gonna combine these, I get plus five x minus 26. And I could try to factor that, but I'm lazy, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus four a c all over 2a. 
So let's see, what do we get there? We get five squared minus four times four times negative 26. We get four, four, one over eight. Is there a square root of four, four, one? Ooh, nice, there is. Um, you get negative five plus or minus 21 over eight. So I get negative five plus 21 over eight and negative five minus 21 over eight, which gives me 16 over eight and negative 26 over eight. So X equals, that one I can do is two and negative 26 over eight is negative 13 over four. So we have to check our answers. If I plug in two here, this will be eight plus one, which is nine, times two plus one, which is three. That will give me 27, but it's positive, so this one does work. Now let's check and see what we get if we plug in negative 13 over four. And I'm not gonna do that in my head, so let me see. Um, four times negative 13 over four, plus one, close the parentheses, open the parentheses, negative 13 over four, go to the side, plus one. So all I'm doing is putting in negative 13 over four where the X is. And notice that that gives me a positive. It gives me a positive 27. So this one works as well. So I actually have two solutions for this problem because both of those resulted in a positive um, argument. Now here is kind of like number six, except I don't have the extra log over here, so the log's not just going to go away like it did the last time. But I do have two logs on this side, which means I do need to combine those together. And when it's a plus, it means I keep the base the same, but now I'm going to take the first argument and I'm going to multiply it by the second argument. Then since the exponential, or since the logarithmic base is two, I'm gonna use the exponential base two. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So two again, and now this exponent. Then exponential base two, logarithmic base two cancel. And I have two x minus five, x minus three, and two to the third is just eight. So if I distribute this, I do have an exponential, so I do need to get it equal to zero. My brain was doing too much. So you get two x squared minus 11 x plus seven. And now we're gonna go into the quadratic formula to see what that's going to look like. So x equals negative of negative 11 plus or minus negative 11 squared minus four times a times c, all over two times a. So I get positive 11, and let's see about that. Um, square minus four times two times seven is 65 over four. Is there a square root of 65? No, there is not. So I have two answers. I have 11 plus square root of 65 over four, and I have 11 minus square root of 65 over four. But I don't know if they are both solutions. So I have to check them in each of these parentheses, okay? So the first one I'm gonna check is that one. So two times, fraction, 11 plus square root of 65 over four minus, so two times that big number, minus five. And let me see the decimal. It's a positive. So it works in this one. I have to make sure that it works over here. So 11 plus square root of 65 over four um, minus three. That's a positive. So this resulted in two positive logs, which means this one is a solution. Let's go check the other one. So two times fraction 11 minus the square root 
oops, I don't know what I did there. 11 minus the square root is 65 over 4. Um, so 2 times that weird number minus 5. That's a negative, okay? I don't even need to check it into the other one because it makes this one bad. So this one is not a solution. So when they tell you to give the exact answer, your exact answer is only this fraction. Now I've already come up to um, about 20 minutes here, but I still have two more examples. So I'm just going to stop, and then in the next video I'll do the last two examples and then jump into the word problems.